want to speak to you today on a very interesting uh, very interesting thought toward, toward the offering and in Psalm 76 verse 11 says the following make vows to the Lord your God and pay them let all who are around him bring presents to him who ought to be feared um, I want to speak about vows to God First of all, many people are afraid of word vow because they confuse the word vow with an oath. Oath and a vow are two different things. Uh, an oath is in a declaration of the truth. In making an oath, the person appears to God to witness to the truth of a particular affirmation he is making. An oath can also be invoked in guarantee of the promise a person makes. And we see that the Bible is very, um, it warns us about oaths. Especially people would used to, you know, oath is like a swearing. When people begin to swear on their mother or on their child or on, the, on the somebody who passed away. And the scripture tells us to stay away from that. That is not wise for us to make oaths. You know, we see presidents and some people who get into elected into some official uh, offices they take oath but a vow is different a vow is a vow on the other hand is a solemn pledge or a promise to God to commit oneself to an act a service or a condition of life in the Bible we see many guys who made uh, vows to God for example one of them is Jacob made a vow and God prospered him one time Jacob had nothing going on for him and Jacob said this if you bless me then I will tithe. For example, many times when you come to service like this and we have an opportunity to give and you say, well Vlad, I don't work. I don't have a job. You can make a vow. Then once you do get a job, you will begin to tithe. And Jacob did that. Jacob wasn't trying to bribe God. Jacob wasn't trying to manipulate God and say, God, you have to do it and I'll give you this. Jacob was making a vow to God. If you bless me, I will give 10%. We see also Hannah made a vow when she couldn't have children. And she says, God, if you give me children, actually, if you give me a child, I will give the child back to you. And God gave her the child. She gave the child back to God. And then God gave her more children after that many times when you have a certain problem that you prayed for so long that you fasted that you gave and everything one of the things that God can be moved by and this is not something we manipulate God again I'm saying moved by is when you make a promise now the dangerous part is when you don't keep that promise that's when you can really mess it up and so if you don't intend to keep that promise don't make the promise we're not talking about that when you're speeding through the highway and the sheriff is standing there and you're like oh god I I'll never do that I'll never watch tv I'll never go to a movie theater I will give 90 percent of my, in my income just don't let the police officer pull me over anybody pray those prayers I did that once and then the next day you know I remember repenting and I was like god I did not mean anything I said that last night and God's like, I wouldn't have that cop pull you over anyway. Why did you make all these promises you're not planning to keep? We're not talking about making promises you're not planning to keep. But when you sincerely, in the depth of your heart, what you're saying, you're going to do it. We also see a judge in the Bible where he made a vow. He says, if God gives me victory, he says that what's going to happen is that I will give whatever comes out first from my house to the Lord. This was not the best vow because he couldn't predict what will come out of the house don't make vows like that whatever comes out out of my house first I'll sacrifice it to God what if your cat comes out you know what if your child comes out he was expecting a donkey to come out when he comes in and his daughter comes out and so there's a huge controversy on what actually happened to her but the point being is that we have to make vows of things that are measurable and the things that you actually know what you're gonna give not just guessing whatever because that will never work out and we see also other people in the Bible, if you can just uh, keep, keep putting other, uh, Samson, he broke the vow and he suffered, suffered hardship. Apostle Paul, he fulfilled a vow. We know that in book of Acts. And so marriage is a vow. There's a lot of vows. The first time that I came across the principle of making vows to God was when I struggled with headaches and chronic insecurity. And I prayed for, for the healing of that thing. I think with everything that, with every ounce of my being. And anytime Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn was very popular during those days, you know, he did that, that thing on the, on the TV, just two of his hands. And so my, my TV, a little black and white TV, a little box was greased uh, because I placed my hands so many times on that TV just for healing of my headaches and for the healing of the insecurities. And so I've done a lot of things and there was one particular moment that I remember it wasn't a particular day but it was a moment of my life where I sincerely gave promise to God. God, if you take care of two things, 
get rid of my migraine headaches which I had every summer almost every single day and you take care of this low self-esteem I give you a promise that I will give the rest of my life to you what I meant by that is that I will dedicate my life to a full-time ministry whether I get paid or not and so two years later passed by and I recognized that I do not have those chronic insecurities that they have recognized that is when we had 9-11 memorial at the track uh, at the track at the track outside over there and I was asked to do a verse from revelations in front of three and a half thousand people and so and I got up there I shared the verse and the next day everybody in school hailed me as a pastor everybody started calling me you know uh, a minister and stuff so I was a, a junior or senior in high school and then I started to recognize that my grades were going up I was doing very good in school I started getting friends in school things were going good and better and I started developing a plan for my future which had nothing to do with the promise I made God and I would come to church in a typical church service like this and I would always get plagued because in my mind during worship and during the message for a while I started to hear my own voice God if you take care of this and that I will give you this and like a broken tape and I was like God I'm worshiping you I'm giving you my life I'm not planning to sin but I knew what I promised to God and I knew that at that moment moment I wasn't planning to fulfill that until the headache came back and I started to be reflective, reflected of how I used to be and I was like you know what no I'll rather because giving my life to God or being a full-time ministry to me was symbolic of like dying on the cross in China or something it was always like terrifying it was always sad I heard stories that it's like it's really bad and difficult I didn't know that serving God is joyful and so and then when I made the decision God started to turn my life around and so I would just encourage every one of you if you are struggling today um, make a vow to God but do not make a vow in haste make a vow considering your heart condition if you may be like Hannah you're completely barren or maybe like Job, uh, Jacob you're, you're, you're financially underwater make a vow to God God if you bless me I will tithe but when he blesses you and you stop going to church God's gonna get you <laughs> it's gonna bless you <laughs> and it's gonna bring you back I have a, a story of a young man Julio if you could come up just quickly um, what happened with Julio is that Julio moved from Sunnyside some of you know his story of how he came to our church uh, first time on Wednesday he came to our church he didn't come to get saved he came to uh, uh, fight some of our brothers uh, he had a girlfriend in town and has a girlfriend in town that um, was coming here and so he was um, thinking that she would coming to our church uh, to you know because the guys in our church just wanted to uh, flirt or something and so um, I remember that day because she was in our house before the service and she's telling us hey he's coming into church and he's gonna like fight guys so not joking I texted our brothers those who just recently got saved I said brothers I know that not everything has been fully sanctified in your life some of the unsanctified parts we might need it today <laughs> I, I met Julio when he came in that, that Wednesday humble he wasn't trying to pick a fight Holy Spirit I think dealt with him on the way here and during the service God touched him he got saved a few weeks later and he experienced the presence of God and so um, he has his children here so what he did is he decided to move to Tri Cities he had a place that he lived there uh, that he owned that he was trying to sell for five months and couldn't sell it and sometimes he would have offers and you know right now the market is really hot so I mean you put anything in sales and so and he had a very decent price people would throw him low ballers uh, just really really low prices and and still wouldn't even come through on those low offers until one day he came to church in the morning prayer and he said to God if you give me if I get an offer for that full price that I want I will give you two thousand dollars what happened next well that next day I got an offer <laughs> and so in the next day he gets an offer that's higher than any other offer he ever had and this offer this person actually called him and says take off the sign for the for sale I'm bringing the money and so they purchased it the, everything worked out and did you fulfill your vow yeah okay. what would you encourage Julio to people who are maybe in that position right now when they are maybe trying to sell something or buy something or um, or they're kind of stuck in a situation just if you make a promise just keep the promise and he'll come through and one other thing I give that 2000 and I don't know how you know I just have a, my job I don't do any side business or nothing and I already have my 2000 back Really? And a race. <laughs> now, please, please understand. This is not a I give, I get. 
uh, th this is a principle that if we in genuineness of our heart honor God God is faithful remember God ain't broke he doesn't have a sewer problem somewhere in heaven that he's collecting a fundraising God is generous and you can never outgive God that's just you have to always live with that kind of a mindset and when you make a vow to God to give something remember you're not making you're not making God better you're opening a door for your own life to get impacted by God's favor and God's blessing amen so make a vow to God or if you've made a vow before and you didn't keep it I ask you that you repent because some of you you actually might be having problems in your finances because you made promises to God in the depth of your heart but you were only wanting to get out of the certain situation that you are in and you dig yourself into a hole where the Bible says God actually will not hold those people guiltless who with their mouth make promises they do not intend to keep what would happen if God would keep his promises the way you keep yours he wouldn't be trustworthy we wouldn't even gather here today because he, his character will be destroyed same thing with you when you make a promise say God I will serve you God I will give this or God I will bless this person keep that promise and God will keep his promises to your life to bless you in Jesus name can somebody say amen thank you Julio